Hi, my name is Jonathan Hicks. I'm back at the Dice Cup, and this evening I'm joined by Mark, Matt, A Bomb, and we've just been finished playing U Boat, which is about sailing around in the North Sea on a German U boat uh, during World War II. And it comes with a companion app. In fact, quite a lot of action happens potentially with you interacting with the app. It's a real time cooperative game. So you can see I've just started another game here so you can see but the time is seven o'clock in the morning and it kind of tracks the time. You can speed up the time so if I tap action then you can see the time is now tracking much faster so you can adjust the time but if anything happens it kind of drops back into real time. So that's an important consideration and each of you has different roles in the ship. So Mark for example was the navigator and one of the things he does when we get a contact is he tracks the direction of the contact and our bearing and things like this on this complicated attack desk, it's actually really difficult isn't it, <laughs> yes. to figure that out. And then he sort of represents it on this little tactical grid, that's the U-boat, and he kind of adds uh, ships on here in the appropriate positions. But essentially we're trying to sail around and sink as many of the British ships as we can. And so that's that kind of role. Um, Matt, you were the engineer, weren't mm. you? So he runs around fixing problems on the ship. In fact, you can see as we started this game immediately, there was a, a maintenance task here. Torpedo Tube 5 needs a checkup in Section 6. So there are sections on the torpedo. So this is section one, two, three, four, five. And that's section six. So the rear torpedo, if you like, tube needs a bit of a checkup here. So he'd have to send some of his guys. Everyone controls four of these people. And you can potentially move them around and then he could do some maintenance over there. Um, but the other thing the engineer does is adjust the speed of the U-boat and the depth of the U-boat. So if we need to dive, Matt's got a lot to do. Now, Abon was doing the first officer who primarily deals with helm so you uh, change course and things he's got two helmsmen here um, but also first aid he's the guy who tries to deal with people when they're sick uh, and then there's the captain of course which gives all the orders uh, and tells everyone what to do but also fires the torpedoes so how it works is uh, the captain will decide on one kind of order so maybe it's change course and this tracks the number of orders you've got so i move this down and i'd say change course and then you have to make sure the people are in the right place so in order to change course, we need the two, you can see the kind of uh, steering wheel things there, have got to be in the right section. And it was section, was it three for that one? Yeah, you can see on here, that's the matching section. So the two blue guys, they're just at the back there, uh, need to be in the right place to do that. And A-bomb says... If course nervous. ready to be set. Okay, that's great. Uh, and so we change the course. And in the app, you tap on course, and it's the first officer who does everything with the app. And you can slide this to appropriate course. You have to decide which course you want to go on. And Mark, the navigator, has a map here. Yeah. So in fact, you start in a particular position for a certain mission, and you kind of put the ruler on. There's a whole pile of measuring. There's a full 360 degree protractor there for calculating yeah. the right distances. So he does all that kind of yeah. thing, and eventually comes back and says the course should be 230. So A-bomb, who is the first officer, would then type in 230. And you kind of go around, if we get the right way, to 230 or thereabouts, and you input it. Yeah, we've got a, a, the, the speaker then tells us, they, this game shouts at you in German quite a lot, so I have no <laughs> idea what it's saying half the time. So are the crew in position? Do we have uh, two people of the right thing in section three? Yes. So the new course has been set, we're now going at 231 degrees. Now when you activate people, you can see these little orange things here, you'd have to put activation tokens on. So in order to activate both these people to change the course, a bomb would take a uh, token from the supply and put one on each. And if they fill up, you can't use them anymore. Now, these are the only guys which have the steering wheel thing, but maybe somebody else wanted to do it for some reason, or they'd already been filled up and they couldn't do it. Then anyone else is in the appropriate section can. So you can see the captain and the first watch officer are both in here. So if I wanted the captain to do the change course for some reason, I could, but I'd have to use an extra activation token. So you've got to think very carefully about these, because um, they kind of fill up quickly and then the guys don't work anymore. I guess they get tired. Um, so that's one kind of thing. You can change the speed. So again, Matt has various people to change the speed of the engine, kind of in the engine room. Um, but a crucial thing, obviously, is you want to dive. You kind of spend a certain amount of your time traveling around the surface, and you have some observers here who stand up out here looking through the binoculars, trying to work out where the enemy ships are. So you can kind of tap in the observers, and I think we've got four observers, and then you get to see. So you can sort of look around and see what's around. I think there's dawn here, so it's a bit dark at the moment. Um, but we can speed up the time. Let me just show you what it looks like if we go very quickly until it's... There we go, I think it must be dawn now. Oh, a message has come in from HQ. So we look through the binoculars, and there we go, it's daytime. And you can kind of look around, and you're trying to find the ships. And you can zoom in, potentially, when you think you found a ship, and 
and try and pick it up. In fact, it gives you this identification sheet, doesn't it? Have you got the identification sheet there? So you're trying to, a lot of the time, you get like a silhouette of the appropriate ship on the horizon, and you're trying to work like a, what kind of ship it is by the silhouette that appears there. So that's, um, that's quite tricky. Uh, so yes, that's the basic activation thing. Um, and essentially you run around trying to find the ships and then you try and sink them. So there's a quite a complicated system of... <laughs> you have to kind of load and flood the appropriate torpedo tubes. So you can tap on these. Again, all these things require activation. So I would have to activate my torpedo men in order to flood the tube there when that one's activated, flooded. We could flood that one as well. And then when you get a ship, you kind of tap on the targeting and you can fire the torpedoes. Uh, there are a couple of guns you can fire as well. We were shooting at one of the ships in this mission, so you can fire this gun. And if there's any aircraft coming at you, you can fire them with a 20mm cannon. So uh, there's quite a lot of different options here. Um, but essentially, you have a mission to complete, which is usually, as I say, to sink as many of this as possible. Uh, every six hours, the watch changes and you kind of, that's, you remove activation tokens from these guys and it slides down and you get a new set of people effectively who are gonna be doing things. Uh, there are some accidents and things, like this is a head trauma that can happen to people. You can get hull breaches, which Matt has to deal with. Uh, there's little, extra little puzzles and things, like a jigsaw puzzle he has to do whenever there's a hull breach. Uh, Mark was in charge of food as well, when you. <laughs> so he has to sort of cook the meal for the day and depending on what meal he cooks, there's a little puzzle that goes on with these tokens. Um, and it can increase morale or otherwise. Because one just key thing finally before we get opinions, um, once you run out of orders here, you can carry on using orders off the morale track, but each time this goes down, potentially you're drawing cards that will have bad effects. So this is an, an injury, so you assign it to a random sailor, and this guy gets injured, and then the first officer would need to spend medicine in order to heal them. Uh, so yeah, that's the game. What do we think? Right, so my opinion obviously comes good based on doing navigation, but based on that, this is by far the most thematically accurate feeling cooperative game I've ever played. Other similar submarine based games have nothing on this for accuracy. <laughs> uh, it's just things like, because, because only E-Bob could see actually what we were looking at based on the periscope, so I'm, I'm constantly going, what's, what's the heading? Where, where are they relative to us? Because I can't see them, so I need him to tell me, telling me where they are relative to us constantly so I can work out where well, they're travelling this angle, so we need to move to this angle to give the information to the captain. It's just where all, every bit just really did feel like I was trying to navigate a submarine, all the all the fun in that. I mean, there's even a bit that uh, Jonathan showed us that for particular things, they might pick up how much noise we're making. There's actually a microphone bit going, so if they're doing like, trying to hear where we are, if we're making too much noise, the other ships can find, like submarines can find out where we are. Yeah, it's completely and utterly unbeginner friendly, because <laughs> it's, um, to the extent that the concern is I don't think you'd want to consistently play this with a new group every time because I think you'd have to play the, the basic mission every time, probably on easy because the complexity is, is literally astronomical for people to learn. But once you've played it and we, as once we got through a certain amount of it, all was coming clicking together, even though it's still complex, it just the cohesiveness of all played together was amazing. Okay. Matt? Yeah, so this is kind of... Um, this is Captain Sonar for people with handlebar moustaches and, and pipes. Uh, and it, it's, it's kind of a little bit like if you've ever played the Artemis Starship Simulator on the PC. It's kind of a cross between um, Captain Sonar and that. So it's, yeah, it's, it's really good. It is super complex. So if you want a, a light version of it, play Captain Sonar. But if you want to play a very realistic and quite dark co-op doing different things game, it's, it's really good. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's got a lot. It's got a lot going on. Okay. Hey, Bob. Oh yeah. I'll, I'll start off by saying I'm not a co-op fan, so <laughs> it had to really do well to keep me engaged. Um, the the actual bits of it and the ship's brilliant. I have to admit, mm. you know, it looks very good. The app, it still needs a little bit of work, but actually, it's really good with the sound effects. It really drags you in. I wouldn't worry about the real time element. It's real time, but it's not. So you sort of. You, you spend time doing orders, sorting stuff out, and that's not, it's real time, but nothing's gonna happen. And then you go, okay, fast forward for an hour, and then when you hit something happening, like a, a ship or contact, but it drops back to real time. So you have got times where it sort of, it steadies and it's nice and calm, and when you hit the real time bit, and when it, that's when you're suddenly speeding up a little bit. Um, I personally played like a submarine simulator PC games and it reminds me of that a lot. All yeah. the all the things in terms of working out the bearings, 
uh, you've got a targeting computer, thankfully it does a, a, that for you. Um, all, all of that is great. If you've ever played any PC based submarine game and you liked it, you absolutely love this. Uh, the fact that you've got lots of different roles, I agree with Mark that this is one way you want to play it as a campaign with the same people. If you had to redo the beginning mission every time, you'd get a bit yeah. frustrated. But already I could see if we did it again, we'd be a much quicker, much more clued up of how to play. So yeah, very good. Rating? I'd give it a um, 8 out of 10. Matt? Uh, ooh, um, yeah, I don't know. Um, if, it, if this is your kind of thing, yeah, eight, eight and a half. Ten. Okay, Mark. For like just casual, probably it's two to three. <laughs> give it like six yeah. and a half. So for me personally, nine easily, maybe higher. I mm. thought it was absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'll be with Mark here. You have to play it with the right group. You need to know that going in. It's heavy. You need people who can cope with a lot of complex information. The navigator role is especially tough. You need to be very good with angles and bearings. I mean, that attack disc just looks really complicated, and it is really complicated. You get the hang of it, but as Mark says, it takes a while. It takes practice. You need to play with the same group, really. But given that, playing this really puts you there. It's so thematic. The app's fantastic. I should say this is an early access version of the app, so it's not complete yet but it still does a fantastic job. The whole torpedoes thing was really, really fun. You've got two different types of torpedoes, so one of them's more reliable, but it has like a bubble trail so they can be seen during the day. So we were firing our electric torpedoes under the water uh, during the day, but they, were, they didn't work. They malfunctioned and one of them missed. <laughs> <laughs> we had to get the gun out and start shooting them, but it was just great fun. Really, really enjoyed it. Um, I'd be on a solid nine out of 10. I thought it was a fantastic game. All right, thanks very much for watching. That was... Your boat!